Hi there, uh, we're here tonight uh, to move some beehives. I'm going to talk through a few different methods of doing that. Uh, one of them is uh, moving hives in a way that you can do that um, during daylight hours. Uh, we would close them up at night when they're all home, but we may end up needing to move them uh, from a distant location and keep them contained so that uh, during daylight hours they can't fly. Uh, so one way of doing that is to use a screen bottom board. Um, this is our screen bottom board here. That provides the entrance and you can see the screen in here. If we go around to the back of this collie, we can see that it's open in this area right here. So this gives us a good amount of ventilation. Just saw a wax moth run in there. That's cool, uh, tripping around there. So this is gonna give us some ventilation and moving bees, uh, there's a big danger of them overheating. So we need to provide lots of ventilation. So we either leave the entrances wide open or if we close them up, we make sure they have good flow through ventilation. So we're gonna have air going in here. And when we open up the top of the hive, we will have airflow right up through the top. We've got a screen on a frame here so that that air can move right through the top and uh, give them good ventilation. We're moving a hive that's got a lot of bees in it so they've got two empty supers and the full brood chamber here. We've screwed this frame down and we've strapped it in place to keep these supers from shifting around and the bottom board is screwed on so everything is fixed together in a way that uh, means if, if, if things shift apart while we're moving them bees are going to be getting out and that'll be a problem. So to keep the bees from flying out what we do is puff some smoke at the entrance here and we're going to shove a little bit of, ins of uh, this foam rod into the upper entrance. We can cut that off and that blocks off that upper entrance. And then we're going to put some foam rod, it's called backing rod. We'll put that in the entrance here and that will keep the bees from going in and out. And we've basically sealed up the hive as far as bee access is concerned, but they will have good ventilation through the screen at the back and the screen up at the top. So we talked about the foam rod here, this backing rod. It's kind of hard to get. Uh, we've got it through uh, log home uh, building supply manufacturers, but it's um, uh, inch and an eighth rod foam. Uh, screen like this, eight mesh screen is easy to get. Any hardware store has it and it's a good uh, substitute for that foam rod. What you do is cut it to shape or to, to length and then bend it to shape. It's got a bit of a V there with two flanges on it and then we just shove that in the entrance. Push that in, into place there. It closes off the entrance but gives them ventilation. Uh, even without a screen bottom board, if you have that and a screen up in the top, that would be adequate ventilation. Uh, but the um, problem with these push-in screens like that, it, it's really tough to seal bees in. Uh, so that but, that, but that is one alternative there. Uh, now we're going to go back and we're going to move some hives that won't be screened in at all. We'll just load them up on the back of the truck. If we do that when it's dark, and we unload them when it's dark, if they need to get out of the hive and ventilate, they can do that. They can pile up on the front of the hive, uh, but they never overheat if they have full access to their entrance. Uh, but this is just a way of doing it if you need to move them inside a vehicle, or if you need to move them uh, where daylight hours are involved with that move. Uh, if you're moving them inside a vehicle, 
be very cautious in how you do that and make sure you have a smoker with you. Make sure you have all your beekeeping equipment and make sure the hive is secured in a way that it can't come apart and it can't move around in your vehicle. Okay, we'll uh, load up the truck in a moment here. We're going to load these beehives up on our truck. You can see they have an entrance down at the bottom. These are the double nucleus colonies that uh, you might have seen in the video that we did on double nucleus colonies. Uh, we're moving these out into a, a new apiary, we're setting up a new apiary, and we've got about 25 of these nukes uh, to move out. The first thing we do is puff some smoke at the entrances, and these have an entrance on either side. So I'll puff a little bit of a smoke there. You can see they have a super on them, and that's why we have these straps on them. These straps are called Kevlock straps. You can get them from Man Lake Bee Supply, uh, fantastic straps. But we've got that on to hold the super in place, and the bottom board is screwed on, so it can't come off. And everything is secure, that's really important when you're moving beehives. So we give them a little bit of smoke, and then we set the, uh, the smoker. Uh, Dave's going to smoke the next hive, so it's ready to go when we uh, go to pick up the hive. And then I'd like to talk a little bit about the ergonomics of picking up and moving beehives. They're heavy, they're awkward, and we are going to do it two people on a hive, so we need to communicate as we're, as we're doing this. So we're both going the same directions. Going two different directions with a beehive uh, doesn't work out too well. Take my word on that one. Okay, so we're going to get a hand underneath towards the front of the hive. Dave's using his left hand, I'm using my right hand. Then we're going to get a hand in the handhold at the back of the hive and we're going to tip up. Pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're using our legs, not our back. We'll stand up and we're going to go straight over towards the truck. Because we're holding it at the front of the hive and the back, you can see how we can tip the hive. If we each had a hand underneath the bottom board, we wouldn't be able to tip it like that to access the, the level of the truck. So we'll set that up like that. Dave's going to go and smoke the next beehive while I position the, the hive on the truck. Slide that over to the middle and then we'll get another beehive. Again, hand near the front, the other hand in the hand all the back so we can tip it. If you're loading a truck, you want to have any hives that are higher towards the middle. So that if you're tying it down or strapping it down, you can secure it very well. So we'll get that there and move on to the next. We'll just carry on. We smoke a few hives ahead and then pick up the hives. They're good and heavy. This is great. We try to put entrances towards entrances. It's a little different with these because they have an entrance on either side. But if we load them with entrances towards entrances, if the bees come out to ventilate, they're all on one end of the box. And they're not on this end and that end and all over the sides. When you're picking them up to unload them, if the bees are all over the place, then they're all over you too and that's obviously not desirable. So we'll just, uh, you can keep that in mind if you're loading hives that have an entrance only on one side. Hi guys, um, so we finally got to our new yard and we're ready to start unloading our beehives here. Um, so we'll just kind of go over a couple of steps to prepare to get the hives off the truck and um, just a couple of things you can kind of do to um, prepare yourself and keep yourself as safe as possible. Um, so the first thing to kind of remember is, is when you're unloading and that's really, uh, the bees have kind of already been picked up, vibrated and, and moved so that's when they're more likely going to be traveling around and looking for you. Um, so protection is kind of more important on the on the latter part of the whole move so 
Uh, this is at this point um, when we really get moving these we might gear up depending on how the bees are um, but that's really when you want your protection so they're on the trucks uh, and the first thing to do when you're starting to unload them uh, these bees have traveled a little bit and they're starting to kind of wander out now that the truck has stopped so we actually what, the first thing we do is start a smoker and then puff smoke down the kind of the alleyways the corridors we've kind of created where the bees will be um, on your full size hives uh, like Paul talked earlier, you're going to have your entrances face together. So that's where you're going to want to puff your smoke. Um, but again, like, like you saw earlier, on these double nukes, they have entrances on both sides. So we're just going to go along, puff smoke in all the little corridors. Just getting all those bees back into their entrance. And we might do that two, three times. Now a lot of this is going to depend on the temperature um, you're moving these bees in. So uh, the, the warmer and the more humid it is, the more patient you're gonna have to be with your bees, um, and the more protection you're more than likely gonna have to have the hotter it is. Um, so of course we decided to do this on one of the hottest nights, um, and we'll see kind of how that goes. Uh, the only other thing to notice is we did keep these lids on uh, when we were moving them, and that kind of forces uh, an air gap in between the colonies, so they're not slammed up against each other. Uh, that's really important just for ventilation. So we don't have these bees close in um, and they're, they're allowed to kind of crawl out as need be um, just so they have a little bit of air. So I think that's all the little pointers for moving them. Um, the only last one is, is the truck uh, or the car if you have that. Um, we have it off here just so we can talk and do our little bit of filming here. But normally when we come to a yard and we're ready to unload, we actually keep the vehicle on and the reason for that is just the vibration effect of the vehicle it tends to keep the bees a lot calmer um, so when we actually get going we will turn the truck back on just again kind of do everything we can to keep them calm and keep ourselves safe um, so then we can move them and we'll get going at that right now we're ready to unload here as you can see i've got a red headlamp on uh, that gives us the ability to see uh, bees can't see the red light, so they won't come out after us. We don't use white light or they'll be go all over us. Uh, so we're going to pick them up just the same way we did to load them. They've already been smoked, they're nice and calm. And we're walking over into our brand new bee yard. So there they are, their new home. They will reorient uh, come morning, they'll fly out slowly, uh, reorient to the landmarks, and there's an alfalfa field uh, coming into bloom just over on the other side here. So good night, girls, uh, and good luck. <laughs>